This is an explicit podcast. Welcome everybody to episode 53 of the Age of Sigbra podcast. I am Gary Hennessy and with me in the studio... <laughs> Shoot, the, in Gary's spare room, yeah. Andy Tolbert. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Trying to s- sound grandiose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, our sponsors, we have Mercia Miniatures. That's M-I-E-R-C-E hyphen miniatures.com. The purveyors of the Darklands Miniatures game. <laughs> and also AOS Alternatives. Fuck no, you, Andy. What's you next? You know what that did to you last no, episode. No, I don't care. I Listeners do not... don't, because you cut it out. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> you know... <laughs> <laughs> but we, we also have elementgames.co.uk make sure you go and check them out for 20% off all of your AOS pre-orders um, help support the show by uh, clicking in the link in the show notes as well so Andy yesterday's episode we went into the background and lore of Malign Importance and we did what's going on at the moment in what's the, going in the on? AOS nobody uh, knows nobody knows yeah so this episode is going to be about the rule section of yes. Malign Importance. How to play your games and the time of tribulation. Exactly. So one of the things I like most about this is that they come in, in, in lots of like modules. Yes. So you can add one of these things, you can add all of them, you can add a couple, d- completely depending on how balls deep you want to go, or balls in, as you would say, you want to go into... Fuck <laughs> on the line for I can't remember if that was cut or not so I'm going to make the joke anyway <laughs> <laughs> like how far you want to go in with your Malign importance games which I think is really cool the fact you can add what you, you want to it mm-hmm. uh, so first up we have uh, the realm of battle section yep <laughs> Monty's attacking for no reason <laughs> it's the realm of battle it is the realm of battle <laughs> um <laughs> So are you challenging me? Yeah. So we kind of had quite a lot of these in the General's Handbook. Yep. We had like sections where you can add extra rules for just saying you're fighting in the realm of X. So, yes. so yeah, yeah, this yeah. one's going on about fighting in the uh, realm of death. So what that's what's really cool is you get an extra um, extra spell that your wizards know. Yes. Which is called yeah, Pale yeah. of Doom, which we learned up. Paul. Oh, Paul, sorry, yeah. Good old Paul Doom. Look, looked it up and still got it wrong. Paul so Doom. Paul of Doom, and Paul is a cloth or shroud that goes over. Cloth a of Doom. Yeah, cloth of Doom. Cloth of Doom. So you've got an extra spell, which I think is. It's cr- more the smoke, isn't it? Because it does have two minis. It has two minis. Yeah, well, smoke. Well, you know, it's I'm all death go. related. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's quite a brutal cloth. spell, to be fair. So it's uh, a casting value of six, and you pick an enemy unit within 18 inches of the caster. You uh, subtract two from their bravery uh, until your next hero. That's phase. massive. Really, particularly if you're doing it from a necromancer, because most banners in a undead are, in a, a legions and a gash army is minus one bravery anyway. Yep. So that's quite a lethal spell. I'm thinking from a seraphon point of view as well. Yeah. Every single one of their banners is minus one to your yeah. bravery. Yeah. And a Carnosaur is also an additional minus to your bravery. So if your slan now knows the ability to do another minus two to your bravery. <laughs> yeah. There's definite potential to get negative bravery. Yeah. I think already you can tell, like, playing some of these modules is full of lols. Oh, yeah. Rather than, you know... Oh, yeah, it's, 100%. It's, so that's the thing. You've also got a couple of um, cool extra... Look, called realm commands. Yep. So it's a couple of extra cool abilities. One's about, basically, uh, being able to add attack car- uh, extra attack dice t- to your guys. Yeah. And the Honor other one is, the dead. Yeah, and the other one is, basically, you can s- sacrifice models in your army for your your general to get wounds back. Yes, so, that's so super live cool, a yeah. longer, So that's cool. Uh, one of the other cool things in it, you've got the Realmscape features. Right, so this yeah. is kind of like a more a, a more board wi- board wise um, board wise board very wide. wise board. Is that what I was meant to say? Yeah, board, board wide. Board wide, not board wise. <laughs> A board How wise of you. You know what's funny about that is I actually remember writing board wise and going, that makes no sense. So, <laughs> obviously my go-to thing. So, it's a board wide <laughs> a kind of terrain effect, although it's yes. not to do with the actual terrain, terrain on the board. It's actually where you're fighting. So, you've got some really cool things you can roll up for there, like Winds of Death is one, and it's described as swirling zephyrs of uh, deathly energy skitter across this realm, snuffing out life forces of those uh, whose path it crosses and stuff like so you've got some read and that one is uh, at the start of your hero face roll a dice 
on a six up, pick an enemy unit and roll a dice for each model. On a five up, suffer some water wound. Oh. So that's that's pretty brutal. But there's some lots of lots of mortal wounds happen in the realm of death. Yes, apparently. there are. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, like you know, keep keeping the theme and stuff like that. There's the haunted realm and the eternal war, which again play around with the bravery characteristics and stuff yeah. of units. So yeah. yeah, you can definitely see where they're trying to really like throw yeah. this theme at. Uh, Scary. Yeah, scary. A lot Ooh, of people be doing that. Um, a lot of people be doing that Scooby Doo run. <laughs> <laughs> they stay in one place for a bit, and then all the scenery keeps repeating itself. So. <laughs> yes, that run. So, uh, that famous run. Yeah. The next section, you've got uh, a table that's called the Power of Death. The Power. So this is kind of a t- to represent that how powerful units dying in the realm of death actually is. Yeah. So it kind of conjures up extra magics like with all these people dying yeah yeah makes realm. sense yeah uh, so what's what a cool nobody's f- stealing these souls no exactly so a cool feature about this is you don't roll unless a unit died in the previous turn which is to represent the fact that it's kind of what that unit's doing yep. once it's dead uh, so what you do is roll a dice and add one for each unit that was destroyed in the previous turn that's friend yep. or foe friend or foe yeah it's just each unit and it basically kind of gets from that. If it turns out the result is a two, every unit on the battlefield suffers one mortal wound, <laughs> which is quite brutal. Is but it kind bad. of gets better and better for the for the person who rolls it for adding yep. like, stuff to your casting and yeah. heal D three wounds, heal some stuff things, like do that. some extreme damage to other units. So it's again like it's something that both of you get to play with. Yep. That seems really cool. So that's probably like. You know, if you, I think if you add every module from this game, units are dying really quick. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Whether from mortal wounds or just from just dying. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so next up, you've got the malign importance, the the kind of the main rule section. So this is po- probably what you'll be seeing in most malign importance yep. games. So this is all to do with uh, prophecy points and interpreting the signs. So that com- your command points? Uh, no, no, pro- no, close prophecy points. Oh, okay. So, um, some, <laughs> if you play forty k, you might think of these as stratagems. So because some might are. say, some might say, yeah. So you've it's been, a cool mechanic, though. That's, yeah, like, that's, fucking, that wasn't a slight. No, it's not. It's an, like, awesome, it's yeah. an awesome mechanic, and I'm really glad they've done something like yes. that. You know, hopefully, in the future, they go more with it. Yeah, I because so, I yeah. genuinely really like stratagems and command points. I yeah, think they're, they're fantastic. Are, they're yeah. a great part of 40k. To build up this uh, pool of prophecy points, you roll a d6 in your hero phase. Uh, sorry, at the start of each battle round, players generate their prophecy points. Yep. So you've got kind of different things that affect that. For example, if you're in the realm of, if you're taking, if the game's taking place in the realm of death, you both add three because yep. obviously this is where it's all going down. Yep. So it makes sense. You the you know all these the prophecies will be stronger. Yes, in, definitely. In yeah, easier death. to read and all that stuff. Exactly. Yep. Having one of the uh, harbingers in your army does the same. Uh, if you are in a war scry citadel, you get it as well. And then for every priest or wizard from your army that's on the battlefield you get plus one yeah so if you're that's a of, hero in a war scry sister though isn't it not uh, just yes. not just not any just unit. Garrison yeah. it, no so each kind of getting all of these you'll be really and also the d6 you're really building up that yeah that pool of prophecy points so Definitely. you're gonna have a real thematic game if you're doing all of these oh yeah yeah there's things. gonna be loads of really cool things happening one thing as well just to just to clarify is the fact that Although the prophecy points seem to be you have to spend them that round. Yeah. So you generate them in that battle round and they're spent in that battle round. Yeah, which is when, unlike command points. Yes. So it, it, yeah, it, yeah, is, yeah. it is different. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's cool. So you are just going to go, right, I need to spend this now. I'll yeah. Because if you're not, it's wasted anyway. It encourages you just to do these cool things and, to, and tell a bit of a story. With yeah, it. yeah, exactly. Which is, which is really cool. So at the start of the first battle round, one of the other things you do is roll to see which of the... Uh, which of like the the signs your uh, which of the malign portents which of, some might say yeah which of the I've realised I just said that a lot so <laughs> <laughs> so kind of which one of these your army is being guided by yeah so there's six options and what it really reminded me of is kind of like the uh, laws of magic in, right in okay like the eighth edition book we've yep. got kind of like a page of six spells on each okay and it's kind of I mean I I, I read through them all. And they've all got kind of not. It's not. I'm going to go through a list of what I found with each of the signs, yeah, sure. importance tables. 
but these are, this is just a very loose like guideline yeah, of, so it, like of its main running role. themes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they they all kind of have similar attitudes of different things. Some are just stronger in one thing than the other. Yeah. So the first one you've got the falling star, and this one is very. I instantly me in my head I went, oh, this is the order one. No, oh, right. It's basically okay, yeah. lots of Makes buffs. Sense. Yeah. So it's lots of stuff to um, help your saving rolls and help your uh, your range stuff. Okay, and yeah. Things like that. As the Lord Ordinator doesn't do enough of. No, obviously not. It does not. It does hardly anything. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then you've got the bloodied skull. So that's to do with a lot of uh, uh, debuffs and damage. Okay. Uh, you've got the black void, which that sounds cool. Does sound, and that's uh, that's kind of movement buffs and debuffs and range. Oh right, yeah. Range things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the bale moon. So you've got uh, kind of movements and debuffs there. Uh, the Riving Serpent, which I think sounds really cool. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the more arcane buffs and damage, so there's stuff to help your wizards cast. Okay. And do extra stuff like that. And then you've, got, then you've got the Red Mist, which is to do with kind of more range debuffs and damage. Okay. Uh, what's what's cool as well is that you each of the uh, Harbingers have their own uh, chart that they can, they can roll on. Um, yeah. Roll on. That they can spend, spend prophecy points. points. Yeah. And what's really cool is if you have one of them, they can swap what portents that are guiding them. Ah, oh, right. So yeah. if you start with the Bale Moon and you've got the, you've got Harbinger, yeah. then they can spend a prophecy point to change what table. Oh, that's they're interesting. Look, they're, that's they're, cool. You know, which portent they're reading, yeah, which yeah, is yeah, obviously yeah. super handy if yeah. you're like... Oh, the star's finished falling now. Yeah. Hey, there's a black void oh, over I there. Need, yeah, I really could do with that damage one. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to start reading this newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm... Re- like, this is... I bought the, the cards for... Yeah, me for too. This, and I'm really... Look, I know we've, we've, you know, spending a lot of time... Sp- sorting out the campaign in the... In the... In the sh- our local shop. Yep. But I really want to soon do a full big game of like Malign a Malign Portance. Yeah, with that'd just, be fun. With just everything in it, like yeah. a full suit. Yep. Just throw, we'll forget half the things, but it'll be fun. Probably, yeah. And we'll just be like, oh, everything's just run off. <laughs> but I really like that. I really like them adding kind of that, the stratagem thing from 40k. Definitely, yeah, this. yeah. And it's, lot, you know, nothing's game breaking, but no, there's lots of nice little perks in it. For sure. I think it, it's going to be cool just to play like a few games like down, um, you know, just, you know, down your clubs and stuff like that and, and see what it's like. And to be honest with you, like even an event, you know what I mean? Uh, oh, yeah. You could just do a fun event with just, it in and just say, look, this is not a competitive event. No, it's, exactly. It's, it's a bit of fun. Let's play some malign importance. Like, yeah. you know, still like, you know, there's, you know, still winners and losers still like do all of that kind of stuff but yeah. it can just be like what armies can take the most kind of yes, like crazy yeah. stuff you could do some really book. cool awards here like yeah. who got to bravery zero yeah exactly stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. i think that'd be really cool yeah i think you could definitely do stuff like that what's also cool is they'd have a little section for skirmish yes uh skirmish is a game that we've both been playing more and more of it is so it's a great little module that you can add on uh to your skirmish games yep and it's got an basically a slightly edited version of using your prophecy points and that. Yes. So because you, you don't want D three every unit taking D three more wounds. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it was basically says that some uh, of the of the signs can't be interpreted in skirmish. So it's sense. just like this not, one's not too enough people. Yeah. It's just like this one's too big. This one's too big. This <laughs> Nobody too big. saw that falling star. No. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Ignore it. <laughs> but Lord Ordinary, ignore it. Ignore it. I've seen the future. It's gonna, nothing. It's gonna win us the game straight away. <laughs> but you've also got the points for the uh, for the Harbingers in there as well, which is quite cool. I think um, I think it's something we're interested in running. Yes, just uh, like a, a a full thing in the realm realm of death, because you've also got the uh, the death based Shaiish based like command abilities, artifacts, rewards, magic, terrain. Yeah. It's all in there to really, really sell that you're in Shaiish. Yeah, definitely. Which is re- really, really good. It's only a couple of pages, but it's, 
I think it's really nice that they've supplemented that. Oh, definitely. I think it's really cool to be able to, you know, have a, a Shaish version of this. And I really do hope that what they've done with this is, you know, is something that is replicated for each of the other realms. Mm. Because the ability to maybe run more narrative-based campaigns using the rules for each of the realms yeah. and stuff like that, you know, through Skirmish and, like, you know, your bigger 2,000-point games at, yeah. of AOS will be super, super useful because, you know, you can go, right, okay, so we're going to play in the realm of death in the morning, yeah. we're going to play in the realm of fire in the afternoon, yeah. you know, yeah. just, like, give it a bit of flavour, give it, like, you know, aid people in running those events, basically. Yeah, exactly. It's, re- it's really cool. I like it. And it doesn't really doesn't stop there either. Nope. Because you've got, you've also got uh, free narrative battle plans. Yes, which are quite cool because they're uh, linked together. Yep. So depending on what you do in one, the next one will develop from that, oh, which is really cool. It just does cool. different. Sl- and some of them have um, dedicated signs that you have to interpret. Oh, that's cool. So one of them's like uh, is is under the bell moon. Right. So okay. you so you have to interpret stars from the bell moon. Right. Okay. Type of things like that, which I thought. Really cool, and it also gives you uh, two pitch battle battle plans. Yeah, these are interesting. I haven't read them. Yeah, but so do you think that they would be ones that could could kind of like almost replace some of the ones that are in General's Handbook? Um, I don't see why not. I mean, you would hope that they're you know more more balanced than like the narrative Matched ones. Play orientated. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's uh, you don't see say for example in the Realm Gate War books and that you don't have like. This is a pitch battle one. Because nope. they're all a bit crazy and like they kind are, of yeah. based well, yeah, on the telling the story. Exactly, that book. based yep. heavily around the narrative of the story. Yep. So the fact that they've actually put pitch battle battle plans in yes. here, I'm really looking forward to us trying one of them. And Definitely. then we'll be able to report back. It'd yeah. be nice to say, like, yeah, this worked really well. Yeah, I'll be up for that. I also like in there that they in the pitch battle ones they have the option called uh, a fated confrontation. Oh, yes. Which basically means if you both agree, you can take your Harbinger for free. For free, yeah. Which is really nice because you can then just still take your normal army. Yeah. And go, let's both take them. And because obviously each one costs slightly different. Yeah. I think it's the War Queen and the Shaman. Or 80, ba- yeah. Or 80 and the uh, Ordinator's 100 and then the Night Shroud's is 120. Yep. If you take the shaman or the war queen, you get you generate more prophecy points with That's them. That's good, yeah. So it gives you that little, you know, it's not a huge perk, but it's a little bit extra to help you in the game. Yeah, I think it's just three extra prophecy points, which yeah. obviously is you know is a good like you know use or two. Yeah, basically, definitely. Of any so of the... so you know you want to keep them around yeah. to generate those points, but yes, Monty. yeah, yeah. Yes. That's what I thought too. Actually, it's a very good point. <laughs> uh, last but not least, you also have the War Scryer Citadel. Yes. Which is cool. And it has kind of like a, a mixed rules of a couple of pieces of terrain. Like we saw the uh, one of the fortress pieces. You can do the same here where you can garrison it. And Monty seems to be attacking Andy's chair. <laughs> but you, What's up, dude? <laughs> you have this uh, chart that you can roll on if you basically own the War Scry Citadel. Okay. Uh, not as in you, you've bought the kit, but <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got it. It's yeah. just a home in a box. As in, yeah, if you've got, a, I believe it's if you've got a hero garrisoning it. Yes, you get to roll on this table, and some of them are pr- pretty hardcore. And what's the ordinator? Because it's all the ordinator. He doesn't have to roll. He just picks what he of wants. Course he does. <sighs> he knows how to work that rickety shack. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but um, also, what's cool is depending on how you've built it you get different rules. So if you've built it with the domed, okay, Arcanoscope. Cool, yeah. I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Uh, It means you can attempt to unbind one extra spell with uh, your wizards. Cool. Uh, Sorry, it's in the same manner as a wizard. So you still have to have a hero garrisoning it. Right, okay, cool. And the other one is if you've built it with the battlements... It means monsters can garrison in it. Oh, that's interesting. Which is quite yeah. cool because obviously you've got like just the the big precipice on the side of it. Yes, so they can yeah, kind yeah, of just, yeah. They can chill out in there apparently. <laughs> so that's quite cool. That's cool. But yeah, I, again, I'd really like to see this back on the board. Have you ever had the kit? Do you know if you can kind of almost like build it so you can switch? I don't know whether you can switch it in and out. No, right. I'd be interesting to see. 
I pretty much always saw it built with the telescope because it, it lo- does it, look cool. It just looks the coolest. Yeah, yeah I, I mean that's how that's how you often saw it. So it'd be uh, it'd be nice if you could swap them out. Yeah, it's kind of I think that's kind of a, more of a new gen thing, like people building kits so they can do that. Yeah, and I think that'd be that'll be cool to again. I want to pick one up at the end of the month. So yeah, maybe yeah. if we can do another episode down the line of how we've been getting on For with sure. it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be really cool. Have you built your Warscryer Citadel? The, yes. the, the ongoing segment this from on- Age of Sigma. <laughs> the ongoing theme that we are building our own exciting narrative of how you're building your Warscryer Citadel. But yeah, that's kind of most of a, you know an, uh, uh, an outline yes. of the rules in there. You know, you pick up the book, read it yourself, and yep. get involved. For sure. Really. For sure, yeah. I think there's, there's, it's it's a really cool toolkit at yeah. the end of the day, isn't yeah. it? It's kind of like, you know, pick up little bits of it if you want. Don't use any of it. Yeah. If, you know, it's you, know, you don't have to do any of no, this. You no. can do, you can be part of the, the Dread Solstice campaign without playing anything yeah. to do with the yeah. Malign Portents rules. But it also just gives you a bit of variety. Yes, yeah. It's kind, of, wanna... it's kind of what I wanted to see with the Season of War. Right, yeah. Like, I think that was obviously, you know, it's the first one. AOS was still fairly new mm-hmm. at the time, so I can understand them not going all out on it and just having, like, the website. Yeah. Where I think this year you've got the book that's, you know, a really accessible price. Yep. It's got loads of cool things in that helps you build, like, this whole theme of your fighting in Shaiish. Yep. And a nice little update of the of the background and lore. Definitely. And also the website is just so good now. Yeah, super like, useful. The, yeah, the new. In case you haven't realised this week, we quite like that website. Oh, it's just <laughs> it's just so so much about it is really cool. You know, you've got like you've got the shorts on there giving you a real good story of what's going on during this yeah. t- time time of tribulation. Sweet shorts. Sweet sweet shorts. <laughs> sweet shorts, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> You've also got like all the, you know, the interactive map of Shaiish, which gives you like some really cool ideas yes. about what's going on, yeah. at the, at, you know, at the time. And then you've got the, you know, you've got your dilemmas going on during Dread Solstice, Dread Solstice. and stuff like that. So I, I just think it's, it's a really cool website. Yeah, for sure. It's they, they built on. They they built on everything that they kind of like did last summer and given yeah. you more basically. Yeah. They've incorporated yeah. a little bit of what they did with the Realmgate Wars yeah. and Season of War into this. Yeah, and it is just a cool kind of like culmination almost of everything that they've done so far. Yeah. Um. What another thing I thought about today is that um with the Malign Portents book, it's quite like even though obviously it's to do with this the Malign Portents and the campaign that's going on, it is also just a if you're fighting in Shaiish, use this book. Sure. Kind of thing. It doesn't have to be just to do with, you know, the campaign. No. You no. can just be like... Use the Shaiish rules, don't use any of the portents and yeah, stuff like well, that, and you're just fighting yeah, in Shaiish, aren't yeah, well, you? you can, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. I'd be really interested to see, like, a book kind of at this price point and this size for each of the realms. Yeah. I think that would be really cool just to do, like, you know, you've got your Azir one, you've got your... You know, you've got your the Axe Key, your Ash Gar key one, your Gairan one. Yeah. yeah, I think that just using again the same system. All you goo to go all with goo. maybe some cool, um, cool oh, new releases. Yeah, I mean we can talk about that now because <laughs> it's like all it's everywhere, ain't it? It is. It's, oh, it's so cool. Oh it's, my god, Marathi. Marathi is so cool. It's just such a sweet ass model. Yes. It's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. Snake, non Snake, both are really cool. Yeah, and listening to and I, I forget his name, but listening to. Uh, so even watching the video of the the background writer for the Daughters oh, uh, of Cain Jeremy. book, yeah, yeah. Jeremy first name terms, are we? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Jeremy Jezza. Jezza. <laughs> J Dog, J Dog, J V, J V is awesome. Yeah. Um, Someone at G W get that to me. <laughs> I want to be there and I want to hear how annoyed he is that someone called him JV. Oh, sorry? I'm not. Uh, so. Just to be clear, I voted J Dog, which is. <laughs> well, there we yeah. go. Yeah, uh, you pick. Yeah. One of the two. One though, of the two. You pick. It has, you, to be clear, it has to be one of the two options. There's no void option. <laughs> 
but yeah, so listening to him talk about um, Marathi and how exactly it's all changed, and if you haven't seen it yet, obviously it'll be on the Warhammer TV uh, YouTube and Facebook page yeah. by now. Yeah. Um, go check it out because he describes Marathi as almost basically having her foot on the heart of Cain yeah. and taking the power that all like the daughters of Cain yeah. are essentially trying to, you know, push his way. Yeah. She's intercepting it and growing in power yeah. herself. It's instead. so, it's so, such and a it, cool it, way of doing it. It kind of did the same thing to me as like when he did the same style video on the Caradron. Yes. He, yeah. Yeah. Like, talking about the code. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. it's just so great to hear someone like so passionate about yep. what they're doing. And, you know, it just comes across in the books and the background sure. of that. That's like, this, the, you know, this dude really yeah. loves what he's doing and yeah. it really comes across. But I really like the fact that he, he go, you know, he talks about that the, basically everyone's saying that the old gods are dead and that Cain's dead. Like, no, no. And they're like, no, no, no. And he's like, to be honest, they're probably right. And he's like, he probably <laughs> is dead. Yeah. And like you said, then Marathi's kind of like, no, no, like worshipping. And yeah. she's basically taking all all of the sacrifices that yep. happens going to her so and that's uh, that's really cool there was um i'm not sure if you read it today but there was a cool article where all the articles so far they've put in little like breadcrumbs about the other elves yes yeah um, sure but like there was uh, in the first article that i read the the ones that went to azir yeah so there there was a small kind of like portion of what you know as Daughters of Cain that, yeah. that went and were, were locked in Azir during the the, yeah. re- the Age of Chaos. Yeah. But this is the main lot of the Yeah, faction. they're kind of like the, the, the diet version. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah exactly. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, it also <laughs> talks about like... Synthetic blood. That's yes, what they use. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so cherry <aid>. yeah. <laughs> it's, um It kind of talks a little bit about the uh, other like figureheads of the elven the elven race. It talks about um, Alariel that she basically now scorns most elves. Right, yeah. And she prefers hanging out with Sylvaneth. Yeah. Makes sense. She Funny has the that. keyword. <laughs> <laughs> and then it says like... She the, doesn't have a choice. No. The <laughs> Teclas and Tyrion kind of keep on trying to make their own factions. We're talking about this, but also we're going to get you excited about this. It's nothing yeah. to do with the rest exactly. of this. But now start looking at this. <laughs> like, for fuck's sake, and then what is that boat? <laughs> yeah, it's God. Not, just, just kill me. What is that boat? What is the boat? Great fish, though. Well great, done. Yeah, great fish, great boat. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's just... It just seems so cool. Like, yeah. I keep on going, like, is this the first Order army I'm going to do? Because, like... I yeah, think, it is. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it just, is. I, uh, I want to see in the battle tone whether you can do a more, um, like, a more elite-style army. Maybe, than, like, maybe Juice... more of, like, the, the serpent. Yeah, the Medusae. The Medusae, that's it. it. Well yeah. done. Yeah, and, um, you've, you've read that article yeah. very recently, haven't you? <laughs> but um, <laughs> the... What I quite like the idea of doing is almost like, um, because obviously you've got a lot of blood in it, so you have a lot of red in the thing. I've got, there's two things I want to do. One, obviously, by just saying this, it already seems like I've signed up to this army. Yeah, it was less of a question of, I wonder if this will be the first order army I do, and more looking for a nod. More, more, yeah, 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 yeah. just looking for permission. Yeah. (laughs) uh, In the few photos they've shown at the moment, they've got this uh, red scheme where all the armour's like a really bright red. Yes. I was like, that's really cool. But the other thing that I thought could be cool is like a real, um, like, monotone grey scheme. Okay. So have like the skin as a real pallid, like grey, and have most of what they're wearing all as a grey. Okay. And then you've got like really vivid like cloth and banners as like bright, really bright, stark red. Okay. So you've got that big, you know, like grey and red goes yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. So you know you've got that big. Yeah, that'd be like, good. Theme running through. So more like just kind of like you know some pa- like super pallid flesh. Yeah, yeah. With some almost like even like dull metallic to grey kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then like the the super bright red as a yeah. Contrast. So on the weapons they all have like the gore red. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. all the banners will just be in normal like red tones. And yeah. Stuff like that, and it should be because it's a fairly easier colour scheme. It should be easier to get lots done. Mm. But um, I'm just interested to see because the 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 witch elves are. 
out of stock on the website at the moment. Yeah, because so they're being I, repackaged in some way. I, Hopefully you would in hope, boxes of 20. Yeah, you'd hope to see like boxes of 20 or 30, really, wouldn't you? I mean, I assume it would be probably boxes of 20. You'd hope so. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to see what price point that hits first before I decide anything. Yeah. But yeah, just super cool. Yeah. Like, just super cool. And look, Monty's doing something. What's he doing? He's got something behind the door oh, that you God. can't reach. God. Um, so, is there anything else? You want uh, no, I think about? that's it. That's us lamenting on a completely random tangent. Yeah, it was. End, yeah, but... but I think it, it felt good oh, talking yeah. about it because yeah. we haven't kind of... Uh, I hope everyone's enjoyed what we've done this week. Yeah. It's, um, I hope it's come across the way we wanted it to. Yeah, and it's not yeah. just like a week's worth of rambling episodes. <laughs> is, is that... But well, I guess that is kind of what we do. Yeah, it's kind right. of what we do anyway. But um, on just like the current releases and the line portents and everything, it's just such a great time to be getting to into be alive. To be, it is. Like, it generally sounds a bit weird, but you know what I mean? Like, it's genuinely <laughs> great time to be involved with like the community and the hobby and it's really good to see like you know we've been doing the you know trying to boost the AOS scene in our local area yes and there is like that pang of jealousy of people getting on board with it right now because there's so much great stuff going yes. on right now yeah, it's yeah, yeah. easier than ever to jump in yeah like with the game and yeah, uh, so many different avenues so many cool things and yeah just so much obviously you know the the release schedule and stuff like that just gives people so much variety and stuff like that so yeah. yeah we wanted to i think like the idea of this week was kind of like we did miss an awful lot of stuff with with the fact that we were away for you know probably a couple of months yeah ish yeah um, so we didn't want to miss any of the cool stuff that had already come out no, no. and start talking about all the new stuff but yeah we also like felt that you know doing this week's worth of episodes would give us enough time to cover everything yeah. in a decent amount of, uh, yeah. decent amount of time and it's pay it the attention that it deserves. A hundred percent. Also, now we can talk about all the cool yeah, stuff. Yes, so and well. now we can start recording about the the, the more the more recent, recent the more recent cool stuff. Cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that's and that's yeah. Andy makes a really strong point now where you know we didn't want to do like cover everything in one episode. We want to do yeah. like give everything enough time that it yeah it deserves and yeah i'm i'm i mean i'm pretty happy with the way we're gonna go forward with battle tones yes and yeah, yeah yeah stuff like that you've got you know you've got a lot of other resources for, for like the rules, rules section and, yeah. and stuff cutting like those that. lists and stuff yeah. yeah yeah exactly so that's the thing like I, I i also would like us to come back after a few you know months or something of using an army or a or a book and then going over how we found it yeah, how we found it to play and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. We're, I mean, we're still going to be attending tournaments and stuff like that. Yeah. So we'll still do run-throughs of li- like lists and stuff like that from that point of view. Yeah. See how we, how we, how we like them and stuff like yeah. that on that kind of basis. Once we've actually used them in a more, um, you know, in a tournament essentially. Yeah. You know, what I mean, yeah. where where they should be played like that. So yeah. yeah, we'll we'll come back to those and stuff like that. But I'm I'm really I'm just really enjoying the the Age of Sigmar lot. Oh, it's just, I just yeah, yeah. It's so it's just really gone from like. What four to twenty? Like, <laughs> that's three, really odd. Three, Where's the scale? It's a weird what is scale. The scale? It's a weird scale. But that's what we're going with. <laughs> four to twenty. I could have said two that? to ten, but I don't four even to like twenty's bigger. <laughs> four. <laughs> what is this start at four? I don't know. <laughs> this has been a long week. It has. <laughs> it has, but I hope it's gone down. Well. <laughs> You've got us back now, anyway. So sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Have we done sponsors? We haven't. We haven't. Not yet. No, okay. Uh, first up, Mercia Miniatures. That's M I E R C E hyphen Miniatures, the purveyors of Dark Age the Miniatures game, and also great AOS alternatives. And making Gary's brain melt. But we also have ElementGames.co.uk. Make sure you go to their website and check out twenty percent off on all Age of Sigma goodie pre-orders. Um, make sure you check out their Element Essentials range as well, making cool MDF movement trays and also some awesome acrylic yeah. forty mil token. Tokens. Yeah. Um, you can also help support the show by clicking in the link in the show notes and on our Twitter page. So if you want to get in contact with us, you can via our email, which is ageofsigbra at gmail.com. You can hit us up on Twitter or Instagram uh, at Age of Sigbra and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Age of Sigbra. So that's everything. So hope you enjoyed the week and bye. Stop. <laughs>